got stub all torqued. He's about to pop a cork. Mad as hell, but cute as a cub. We climb with stub. Hi. Thanks for joining me for the season five premiere of Weekly Wine with Stub. Today we're sipping an easy drinking red blend from Washington State, but I'd like to jump right into this week's wine if we can. The pseudo outrage over the NFL's lack of action following high profile player and owner transgressions over the last month or so is deafening, but useless. The NFL is a sports entertainment organization concerned only with expanding its reach and increasing the revenue of its billionaire franchise owners and overpaid athletes. So if you don't agree with the NFL and it's handling its faux responsibility for players off field behavior, then don't watch next week's football contest. Quit purchasing NFL licensed merchandise. Quit watching or listening to sports news programs that deal in the soap opera goings on of the NFL. Because the NFL success is based on three things. The hubris of billionaires, the on field performance of its millionaire players, and the blind support of its rabid fans. Look, the idea that the NFL as an organization is responsible for the character development, financial counseling, or criminal rehabilitation of its players is effing ridiculous. And contrary to what seems to be popular belief, the NFL is not a parochial school or law enforcement organization. So why in the hell do we expect the NFL to coddle these well-paid, supposedly educated, grown-ass men who take the field any given Sunday? The NFL is not my, nor should it be anyone's, moral compass. I didn't need a video of an overpaid entitled asshat punching his soon-to-be wife to convince me that domestic abuse is wrong. I didn't need a billionaire owner to get arrested for DUI to take a stand against drunk driving. And I didn't need a star player to be charged with murder to rethink my stance on killing. But by all means, NFL, go ahead and try to convince us that you're about character and citizenship and all else that is right and good in the world with a couple of new hires and a shiny new PR campaign. Because none of us will see right the hell through that. Or maybe we just won't care. Because like you, NFL, We'll forgive anything that doesn't upset us, make us uncomfortable, or affect our bottom line for more than a week or so. And best I can tell, you haven't suffered a major rating slump this season, have you? That said, there's no way today's NFL cares as much about the character of its players as it does about their on-field performance. There are several high-profile examples of NFL players re-entering the league after major legal trouble or jail time to prove otherwise. I mean, hell, just this week, Dallas Cowboys defensive lineman Josh Brent was conditionally reinstated a mere eight months after his conviction for intoxication manslaughter. So out one side of its proverbial mouth, the NFL says it's okay to get boozed up and kill your friend, while at the other side, it says good riddance to Ray Rice at all. But go quietly into that good night and rehabilitate yourself, gentlemen, and be sure to stay in good football shape. Because following the touching, tear-filled pregame interview about how much you've learned and grown over your entire year of court-ordered exemplary citizenship, I'm sure you'll emerge from the tunnel with your team to a hero's welcome from the hometown crowd just in time for next season's opening game. This week's wine is the 2011 Wild Haven Blazing Red from Washington's Columbia Valley. Hmm. On the nose, I get a heavy plum, a little sweet spice, and just a hint of vanilla. Wow. Uh, the palate of this medium-bodied wine brings the plum big time, almost to the point of a sweet, juicy prune. Wow, this wine is really jammy, but with a medium-length finish. I wouldn't personally mind a little more acid on this one, but it's pretty decent. As for pairings, keep it simple. Quick midweek dinners, even if you're just ordering a pizza, will probably go very well with this wine. Overall, this is a serviceable red blend that'd be ideal for larger gatherings because it won't offend serious wine drinkers, but won't be over the head of casual wine drinkers either. And at the price, you won't break the bank making sure you don't run out of fermented libations. Look, I'm not head over heels in love with this one, but I'll also probably keep a bottle or two around for spur of the moment gatherings. In a garage, say? Huh. Well, thanks for joining me. Don't forget to follow me on the Twitters. Follow the rib on the Twitters. Give Cork and me a like on the old Facebooks and maybe spend another minute or two on the YouTube channel here and see the last couple of parody videos to include my latest, an original song no less, Spit or Swallow. Once again, thanks for joining me, and until next time, stop coveting, start drinking. Cheers. <laughs>